Hello guys, Ali Mulkarim here. Today we're going to see how to work with socket programming in Java and we will be very quick. So here we have two classes, one is client, one is server. Uh, before we have, I've tested the code obviously. So uh, we just made two classes, written the scanner class itself to get the input. Uh, for server, we don't need the IP, but for the client, we need the IP to where to connect to. In server, when we just create the socket or server, it it all, all automatically connected to your local IP, which is generated from your NIC or network uh, card or LAN card, something like that. So to keep your server running, first we're going to write a while loop. And in this while loop, we're going to keep it true so that the server keep running for uh, un until we need a break. So, and uh, the first thing you need to do is create a socket server, server socket, server socket. Server socket, and it requires a port, and we're giving it a port. That's it. And okay, so it could return a uh, exception. So we're going to tr keep it in try catch. And inside our while loop, what we're going to do is ask for uh, acceptance. It has a method called accept. Um, so since we're uh, writing it inside the try catch and we're not getting it outside so let me just make it global it'll be better let's make it a static Um, when it uh, when you call the accept method, it will give you a socket. So you should create a socket, and uh, via this socket, you're going to communicate with your uh, client and so on. So far, so good. Still have an error. Okay, so it could also throw an exception. So we'd like to create this one above. Okay, so far, so good. First thing we need is to get input from the client. So whatever inputs that client made, we want to get it. Uh, to get the client's input, we need a buffer reader. Okay, so it should be buffered reader, buffered reader. If we just take a look at inside the instantiation of buffered reader, it takes a reader as an inst instantiation object. So to create a reader, we're going to use input stream reader. We're calling it reader, new input stream. And as you can see that an input stream reader takes an input stream. So we need an input stream so far here. Stream. And we can get the input stream from our socket. Get. We could just write all these three lines in one line, but I really like it if we have those uh, breakpoints so that you can remember that how it's really instantiating. So we need a reader here, I made a mistake. So far, so good. So we have now our uh, reader to get the input from the client. So we could write here that we have our reader 
to get the from clan. So now, next thing what we need is an output datagram. Let's say we take the input from the client and now we process the input. Now we want to give back what we process inside our server to the client. To do that, we need an output stream. So let's create a data output stream. Data output stream and it takes a output stream as an out. So we call it output stream. I just go backfiring those and I can get the output stream from my socket. Get output stream and it will give my give me a suggestion. Boom. And we have our output to client. Okay, so via this, we are okay. So far, so good. So now, let's say we're taking input from the client. And we have our input from client object, which is a buffered reader and read line. That's it. Now we need to write our client code. And for client, we actually need the IP. So if, if we keep it blank, let's give it as localhost. So first thing, if it is blank, then server IP, if it is, let's say no or equals this one then server IP equals localhost that simple next what we need is port that which port we wanted to get connected with the server server port better if we have greater than 9000 and it should be uh, from the server. So whatever server is running, we should input the port here. And it should be an int. And it should be port. So far, so good. Now we will try to connect with the socket that server created here. We're going to connect it by our port and IP that we have taken input from the user. We're going to try and if we succeed it, then we're going to do something. And see that it takes two inputs, host and the port, and that's what we're going to give here server IP and the port. Okay. It could cause an exception. We're going to add that into the throws, but I really don't like that. I like to give it a try catch, but since it's a very quick tour on Java, I'm going to leave it as it is. Now inside, Client is not going to be running all the time. Client will run at a time and it will be gone. So first we're going to take an input from the client. We're going to do it by scanner. Since we have a scanner dot next line. We can also give it a message that we want input from the client. So here we're going to give the server 
IP addresses so that it will be meaningful to the user. So server plus I'm going to use colon and the port. So where did I miss? Okay. So I'm taking input from the client. So far so good. Now, um, I need to actually um, get the data, actually send the data to the servers. To, to do that, we need a data output stream as before. Right in data stream data output stream and as you remember from previous it takes an output stream which we could instantiate from our socket. Get output stream. You could actually do it in inline here, but I choose to write it like this. And with this, I'm going to write the bytes to my server. So I'm going to use write bytes this method. So it takes in a string. But one thing important that it only doesn't take on the strings, but it also requires a uh, in of line or a slash n. So if you don't give the slash n, it will not work in the server side. So make sure you put the slash n so that uh, when the server is processing, it knows that it's in the full line. So that's very important. And when the server processes, server sends the data to you as well. So to catch the data, we need a buffered reader as before. So if you remember from the server, almost everything else is similar. Saying as buffered reader, I miss it with buffer. So new buffered reader, as you remember, it takes an input stream and we can make the input stream here, input stream and input stream takes um, uh, in uh, stream reader or input stream only so we could get it from our socket if you remember from previous get into the stream that's it so the three lines of code we just got it in one line so we could also name it as processed data from server boom so string process data read line that's it and we're going to output it the s out is the template Okay, so we're done with the client programming and we have a little bit left in our server programming is a processing. So we're taking the input from the client so far here good, but we haven't passed the string to the client. We're going to do it with the data output string. And in between, we're going to do some operations with it. So to do that, I would really like to do it like this operation whatever we do we actually get a back string string processed data I don't know, I like to call it as processed data because we get something out and our ID is smart enough to give us a hint to make method and Inside, let's say we want to, let's say, reverse it, or uh, let's say add something to it. 
let's just add it that your data is processed simple is good we could do heavy manipulation but for simplicity we're just keeping it simple processed from server boom that's it and we're just return it okay so in the output stream write bytes as a string so again slash n is very important don't forget it now if we just run our server first okay so when we're connected with the uh, socket mm, I'm gonna write it like this your server is connected server is online you can connect from client with port and the port is the port that user inputted boom and in the client do we don't want anything it's a client app so you can think of those as distinct machines the one machine is running as server so first what you need is let's say run this program so when you run this you can really think of it as a machine another machine and client is running in another machine so let's say 9051 let's try to do it so we're connected with a 9051 port now now let's try our client app in the client app uh, we're going to leave it as empty because we're currently in localhost but if it is in different uh, machine then we have to get our uh, network ID network ID so we could do it by IP config and this is my IP here so for your case your IP and you put that IP uh, in here for me I'm going to keep it as blank 051 okay so I made some mistake maybe somewhere so okay so in the client scanner wait for it okay so sometimes uh, when you take scanner to take input inside a socket it doesn't go very well so to solve that problem we could use the buffer reader as before but this time we're going to use it from the system system not in so we're going to say that system dot in okay here we're going to say system not in and we still call it input from input let's say input taker from client that would be a good name and it should be red line okay, so still we're running uh, this one so try keep it blank port 9051 and now we have the input and we're going to say it hello world socket programming boom and see that you're getting a process data from the server I'm not really running in this one this one is running itself but I'm getting in the client machine that server process some data and give it back thank you for watching I'm Ali Mulkarim and if you like it subscribe and if you really like it give it a thumbs up if you don't like it describe why you don't like it we will make it better next time thank you